If I ask you to pick a smart individual in history, there is a good chance that you would pick Albert Einstein. His last name even became an adjective to describe someone smart and with good measure. His work changed our understanding of the universe and made possible many of the things and services we enjoy today. But as smart as we think he was, even geniuses make mistakes. They're also human, nobody's perfect. And Einstein made a big one, he even called it his biggest blunder so you can be sure it was no small thing and there wouldn't be a video telling you all about it so with that introduction this was einstein's biggest mistake but first let's see what he was referring to to understand Einstein's mistake, first we need to look at his theory of general relativity. You know, mass and energy bend space and time? That theory. He worked in developing it between 1907 and 1915 to later publish it in 1916, with some test on Earth and some help from Mercury to see that everything checked out with what we already knew. And just for funsies, he tried to put his theory through its spaces by applying his formulas to the entire universe. And this is where things started to get weird because his theory painted a universe that was either expanding or contracting and i'm pretty sure you're thinking well yeah the universe is expanding that makes sense but the thing is in 1915 it was widely accepted that the universe was actually static Einstein didn't like his theory telling otherwise, he needed it to abide by the common thought at the time, he needed a new element in his equations. So he added lambda, the cosmological constant, a sort of force that would oppose gravity and cause the universe to be in a state of balance. Unstable balance, yeah, but balance nonetheless. So, with his universe in complete stasis, he published what we know as Einstein's field equations, and everyone was happy and everything was right. Until it wasn't, because just a year later, in 1917, Dutch physicist Willem de Sitter found a solution to Einstein's equations that resulted in an expanding empty universe, a place with no matter. That can't be right, I mean we exist, you're watching this video right now and hitting that like button and subscribing, so there is indeed matter in the universe. See what I did there? And not only that, in 1922 another blow came when Soviet physicist Alexander Friedman found another solution where the universe is in fact expanding when the cosmological constant is involved. An answer he arrived by, well, not assuming the universe was static, like Einstein did. Which brings us to the latest blow to Einstein's cosmological constant, Edwin Hubble. You may know his name thanks to a famous space telescope, and if not, I'm pretty sure you have seen some of the pictures it has taken. But returning to Edwin Hubble, in 1929, after making a couple of observations and consulting with other fellow scientists, he came to the conclusion that, drumroll please, the universe is expanding. That was the final nail in the coffin for Lambda. The equation was right from the beginning, no cosmological constant needed. The universe was expanding and gravity was slowly decreasing its rate of expansion. This resulted in Einstein removing Lambda in subsequent publications, calling it unsatisfactory and redundant. And not only that, George Gamow, a cosmologist that knew Einstein, told in his autobiography that Einstein remarked that the introduction of the cosmological term was the biggest blunder of his life. Sure, it's all anecdotal and there's no actual evidence that he actually said that, but it's a cool story nonetheless. Einstein died in 1955 at the age of 76, thinking that Lambda was just a silly mistake and that it should have never existed, a redundant number. And that was the accepted conclusion, at least until the 1990s, when it was dug up from the ground and brought back in its own redemption arc. Because, you see, physics is weird sometimes, and two teams of scientists made the astonishing discovery that the universe was indeed expanding, but instead of decreasing its rate of expansion, it was increasing. The expansion of the universe was accelerating, there was something fighting gravity and winning, something we couldn't see or measure, some kind of dark energy. Which was also another piece of the puzzle needed to understand some other things. 
For example, theories and math pointed to a universe that was flat. But observations in fact showed a curved universe. There was not enough matter and dark matter in the universe to flatten it. But if you add this new dark energy thing, it all checks out. The cosmological constant, this dark energy, was kind of the solution to these problems, helping us understand why the expansion of the universe is accelerating and why it's mostly flat. Sure, a lot of new questions and conflicting data arose, but that's something for another video. What matters now is that Einstein was right. There is something, a cosmological constant, dark energy, vacuum energy, whatever you want to call it, that is fighting gravity. Sure, he didn't do it for that exact reason. He wanted to explain a static universe, but the idea is there, so in my book he's right. Sadly, he didn't live long enough to see his biggest blunder be redeemed, even if it was sort of a right answer for a wrong solution. And by wrong solution I mean that the universe was static, not the theory of relativity. Oh no, that thing is airtight, it has held up time and time again. So in the end, as Neil deGrasse Tyson said, without a doubt, Einstein's biggest blunder was having declared that Lambda was his greatest blunder. And that sure was Einstein's biggest mistake. I really hope that you enjoyed that video. I want to thank my friend Eddie from C Square for lending me a hand writing this one. He has an awesome channel where he talks all about physics, so go check it out. His link will be in the description and please send him some love from me. Do not forget to subscribe to this channel if you want more content like this. I upload every 15 days, so hit that bell to get notified when I do. Also, leave a comment telling me what other topics you'd like me to cover next. I'm always down there responding to what you have to say. I hope to see you in the next one. Have a nice day and goodbye.